Thank you everyone uh, for attending today. We're going to get started. Sorry for the delay. We had some uh, technical issues, but we seem to have overcome those. My name is Suzanne Amberlis, and I'm the community manager here at Daybreak, and we're happy to kick off this year's Lunch and Learn season with some maintenance planning. And we have two special guests with us today, including Adam and Bradley from Sort of Pro Painters and Robbie Smith of Splash Painting, who will be joining us uh, in a little bit. I do just want to take a moment and recap uh, the Lunch and Learns, which are part of Daybreak's educational series. These sessions are hosted by the Daybreak Community Association and different vendors that we work with, as well as partners within the community. The idea for the series began as a way to offer information to residents and tools to residents in hopes that they could benefit from knowledge and the interaction with industry professional, professionals. Although we don't endorse any of the vendors that participate in the Lunch and Learn series, we do hope that everyone finds them as a great resource. So at this time, I would like to invite representatives from Sort of Pro Painting to talk a little bit about maintenance planning, painting, and uh, all the things. So my name is Adam. I'm a Sort of Pro Painter. Um, I've been in the paint industry about 20 years. Um, I started working for Sherwin Williams. I worked there for uh, 14 years and then uh, was recruited by Sort of Pro to come uh, run the commercial side of things. I do all the commercial estimating for uh, Utah. So we paint everything from little door frames in a, in a commercial space or a managed space to high-rise hotels. Um, we've done, we do large tilt-ups. We do pretty much everything architecturally you can think of. We are, um, we commercially, we, we, we have about 60 painters available. Um, and residentially, um, we have five estimators, and we do we have about 150 painters available. Um, not necessarily individual crews, but um, 150 individual crews, but um, groups of uh, crews are anywhere from two to eight people. So we can tackle large and small projects. Um, Utah-wide, we did um, about 3,000 projects last year. Um, this year, we're growing, and we will do about 4,500 projects. So we are, we have the bandwidth to do a lot of work. Um, Brad uh, is, I mean, I can let you jump in and talk if you want, or I'll just do it. Um, I, I feel like I can speak loud enough for everybody to hear. If you need, if you need me to talk louder, let me know. Um, we have five commercial, uh, sorry, five residential painters, uh, painting estimators, and they do, we service anywhere from Logan to St. George. And so uh, you'll see Brad, Brad focuses mostly in the Daybreak area and West Jordan, and so you'll see his face around here and his uh, his expertise. He's been with the company for a long time and seen a lot of projects. Uh, we were asked to come and talk today about uh, a maintenance schedule and some of the things that you'll see with painting. Um, unfortunately, painting is a maintenance thing. It's not something that just you do it once and you forget about it. It is something that has to be kept up on. Um, the number one killer of paint jobs in Utah is water. Uh, our sun does it. Good amount of damage, but water, people tend to let sprinklers just go to town on your house. And so everywhere where a sprinkler can hit um, is going to have water damage. And we can talk about that a little bit more um, as things come up. But we have a list of, of paint problems that people tend to run into. And some of these, this is just on our website, and everybody can go look at this. But some of these things will not apply to Utah because we have a drier climate than, than, uh, than uh, other regions in the, in the United States. So we'll skip over some of those, but I'll go over some of these things. Um, the first one we'll talk about is water damage. And you've all seen it where you can see on uh, wood fences is probably the worst thing. Um, when we're staining wood fences, they tend to take a lot of abuse because sprinklers will come up and hit it, and you'll see that nice arc pattern. Um, <laughs> you're smiling because you, you see that every day. Um, that is the number one killer because it actually washes the stain. If it's a semi-transparent stain, it washes the stain out of the wood. Or, um, if it's painted, it will get behind the paint and it will push the paint off the, bill, or off the fence. Uh, it also works the same on hardy board, on brick, on any surface that's painted can be damaged by water. Unfortunately, what happens is paint, even though it, it's, it's a solid surface, um, it is still very porous. It still lets moisture go through. And unfortunately, 
Um, it's not a waterproof forever product. It is something that uh, it's meant to breathe so it doesn't, your house doesn't mold from the inside out. It's meant to let water out, but it also lets little water in. Um, it does, it, it's horrible for, the water's just bad all the way around. So stay, stay out of the water. Um, if you have a house that your water, your sprinklers are hitting it, or your downspouts aren't, aren't directed properly, or your drip edge on the edge of your house is not properly installed, you're going to have some issues. Um, because it just, water will find a way to even make its way uphill. A lot of people don't understand that, but water can defy gravity. Um, it will, it's called water wicking, and it will drag up itself uphill, and it can find its way behind things. Uh, we did a, a project out in Stansbury where we had to waterproof the brick, um, because the brick uh, that they built the fire station out of was super porous, and when the sprinklers would hit it, um, over the years, water made its way all the way through that uh, eight-inch wide brick into the building was causing the building to have mold problems on the inside from the sprinklers. So we had to go waterproof the brick because um, it causes issues. So as we go through this list, you'll be able to see it up here exactly what I see in my phone. Um, it will change that way too. So some of these things will apply to you guys. And if you have any questions, let me know. Um, we can talk about them and stop and ex expand on it and make it bigger and so you can see what it is. Um, some of these things will, will and will not apply to your situation. Um, the first one that we have on here is alkali resistance. Um, and this is designed, this is mostly for like uh, cementitious types, type situations. So if you've got hardy board, that's a cementitious board. Um, it's just basically compressed cement. Um, and it, they mold it with a, uh, like a wood pattern in it or sometimes it's just smooth. But Daybreak has a lot of this stuff. And what happens when, when you're doing, when alkali resistance is a, is a problem, you get a little bit of, uh, Amy's texting us, we'll get rid of that. Um, uh, you'll get a little bit of the, um, they have too much lime in the, in, the, in the product when it's being built. And so there's nothing wrong with your paint at this point except for it's reacting with the lime. It's not horrible, it won't um, ruin the life of your paint, but it's going to have a, a, a type of a, uh, a film that when you rub your hand on it, it's going to be a little bit chalky. And so that's just that's just part of the process. And it can be washed off and then coated again. And once it's done reacting, it won't do it again. Allergatoring is a... Oh, yeah. So how long should you expect that to go on? Chalk. So as... Depends on how much lime or on how much too much of lime they put in the. In the so in other words, if you paint it once and it comes out, if you go over it and repaint it, is it possible? It's done. Out again? It's done. No, okay. it's a, it's a reaction with the. It'll just wash out basically. So it's a one time guess. So that's that's a that's a whole bag of questions. Um, so hardy board is. It's not a forever maintenance thing. Your paint job, the hardy board will last a long time. Um, so as long as you maintain the paint, every six-ish years is a, is a paint cycle, um, your hardy board will last a long time. Now, the paint will last about six years. That's what, about what everybody does cycle-wise. But the color may or may not last that long. The colors are susceptible to fade. And so if you touch up a red or a bright paint, basically... Any color we have here in Daybreak, it's not going to touch up the same way. You're going to have a lot of fade, especially on the west and south facing. You're, you're both shaking your head, yeah. Yeah. So because paint fades out, it's still structurally sound, so you're good to go, but it's not, it doesn't look as good as it once did. And I'm sure you've seen, red, red is the worst. Red fades, within six weeks, you've got a different color, and the touch up is horrible. And so whenever you, you're painting, like a, a touch up on a red, you might as well just paint the whole side because it's, it's so yeah. Did you say hardy board? Is that the pre colored wood board? So, yes and no. Some of it in daybreak was pre colored, some of it comes factory gray, and then they paint the house to the color that, that was chosen. What that there all the construction around it? It's all come, it all comes in court. It's supposed to be. Yes. So, that, that is the stuff that, that is hardy board that's pre painted at the factory. Okay, so it's actually got a paint coat on it. It's not, the yeah, it's, not, it's not all the way through. It's not a, a block of color. So it's just on the surface. And it won't last forever. 
the factory finishes are made to be worn down or recoated faster than, than a, a, a top coat. Um, between him and I, we, we do, I mean, he, he, he's a painter too, so he understands what, what's going on here. But you'll repaint a uh, hardy board a lot more often than you would like an aluminum siding because that, that's a, a material that will fall apart quicker than like an aluminum siding. There's no aluminum siding in here. But that's just another thing. Next question. We're good? Okay. Um, so, blistering is our next problem, and you'll see this a lot. What happens is we get ambitious and we go out and we paint our front door, and we paint it when it was too hot. And so, your door should not be hotter than what you can handle touching. If you can touch it and it's hot to the touch and it burns your hand, don't be painting that. Because um, you're Paint dries on the top faster than it can dry underneath, and it can blister the paint and it'll come right off. And they dry little bubbles, and then you can't sand them out. It's time to replace the door. So don't paint when it's hot. Blocking is probably not a major concern here. This is it's still going to happen in some places. So when you paint um, a door jam or a window, and then you close that door or window before the paint is cured, it will dry the touch. But, but it's not cured yet. Um, the blocking is when your paint glues something together. I'm sure somebody's put something on the shelf that was recently painted, and you have to break it off the shelf. That's blocking. That's when your the, the additives in the paint are gluing the surface together. So nothing's cured out yet. Nothing's um, solid. Paint cures in about 30 days. So if you can leave that cabinet door open or leave the... Um, window open for 30 days, it's not a real, realistic thing, but that's going to reduce the blocking. Um, there are certain paints that you can put things on or close the doors quicker to reduce blocking. Um, we just have to order the right one when we're, when we're painting. Um, we partner with Sherwin's. He's got a Sherwin's coat on. We, when you're when you're packing projects in your own house or you're having somebody come out and do this, do not settle for a lower quality paint. Um, Talk to any painter, Benjamin Moore, Sherman Williams, high-end paints make a world of difference. You can't get good quality from Lowe's or Home Depot. I just, I don't, if I'm bidding a project and they want to supply the paint from Home Depot, we're going to charge them more because it takes more work to get that paint to do the same thing. Um, coverage is bad. It doesn't have the longevity of the paint. So it's, don't settle for a lower quality paint. It's, it's like the platinum level and then your entry level cars. There are just huge differences as far as how, how it looks overall also. Um, so another problem you have in, in Daybreak um, or just anywhere, burnishing. Burnishing is something that happens on the inside and the outside of the house on any area that's used. Burnishing is when you, and the best way to describe it, because I'm sure we've all seen it, is when you take off your shoe at the end of the day and you throw it against the back of the closet because you're, you're upset and it leaves a little shiny spot where, or you hit it with your, you shake your head, you know exactly what I'm talking about, where around the corner where a backpack rubs and the paint is shinier and then you've got a, so you've got a nice eggshell finish wall and then you've got a little shiny spot where, where you washed it or cleaned it. That is burnishing, where you break, we actually break the tops of the paint off. Let me mark it. Draw it out for you. No margins. All right. So, on a scientific level, paint looks like jagged edges, and when you wash it, paint will, especially if you use an abrasive type of, don't use 409. That's the worst cleaner you can use. Magic erasers are the worst thing for paint because it takes it off. It doesn't let it get clean. The best way to clean is with a soap and warm soap and water and dab it. That's the best. Don't use your. Um, don't use this. Those are the worst for your paint job. But your paint on the microscopic level is jagged and it has lots of peaks and valleys. The higher the sheen, the, le the less peaks and valleys you have. So you have a flat has big peaks and valleys and that absorbs a lot of light. And when you wash a flat um, or you burnish a flat with a shoulder or a backpack, that breaks those edges off and lays it down so it's a smoother finish now. Um, and that's, that can be, I'm oh, sorry. I, I, I thought I heard it. So, um, burnishing is something that you can avoid by not touching the paint or starting with a higher sheen to begin with. 
Um, it's going to happen outside if you use a flat and you try to touch something up or um, you kids hit it with a lawnmower or whatever the issue is. If it gets touched, that's what's going to happen. Um, this is happening all over. So this is... Oh, I thought it was going to work for that. Okay. So maybe we can see that. No. This is not going to work. So this is loss of call confusion. And this happens at everybody's house, mostly on the inside, and it's because your house is moving. You're constantly expanding and contracting. In Utah, we have a 100 degree difference between winter and summer. And we're, some days we're at zero, and then in the summertime we're 106, so that's a huge fluctuation. And everything is moving. So you'll have up to a half an inch of movement within the house and the walls and the room. And so as your house moves, your, your windows expand and contract at a different rate than your walls do. And so what happens is that caulking can only move so much. And if they've caulked it um, with too much caulk or they didn't do it the right way to put back a rod behind it, what will happen is it's got to tear somewhere. And it never tears where you can't see it. It tears where, where you can see it. And that's why you get these cracking and these, these problems. Um, a quality company will come in and will re-caulk those and seal those up. You don't necessarily need to remove all the old caulk, but in some instances, you have to, because it just makes it look better. If you go over the top of that, it's not going to make it crack again in the exact same spot, but because your house is cracking or, or moving, that's why it's going to crack. It's something that, just a maintenance thing you have to do. But, yes? Um, caulking is supposed to be able to take that expansion, right? Supposed to, yes. Doesn't it make a difference, like, so there are different quality levels of caulk. Just like we talk about different quality levels of cars, certain caulks will have different expansion and contraction of allowances. So most caulks um, are going to be anywhere from three eighths up to I mean, three eighths. Are like you need a better carpenter if you have three eighths gap. <laughs> um, <laughs> but um, you're going to have a lot of movement. So if it, I wish I had a marker, I, I can draw it on there. We'll show. So what happens is, I can draw it here and I can hold it up. Your caulking, every surface has three sides. And so we've got three sides to the surface. This is your exposed surface to where you can see. If your caulking touches three sides, it's going to tear somewhere. It has to give somewhere. It can't, it can't flex that well. If it touches two sides, so they've pushed some back around them, if there's a big gap, They've pushed some backer rod in there, which is a, a foam. That will allow it to move and not and only touch two sides because the, the foam will move and shift because that's not touching the third side. But if the caulking is touching all three sides, it's got to tear somewhere, and that's why we, it always tears where you can see it. But if it's a high-quality caulk and it's touching two sides, it can move a lot. There are, there are caulks, there's one called Big Stretch. It'll move up to an inch. There, they have those tilt-up buildings that are massive buildings. Those... Expansion joints, I mean, there's a there's a three inch gap on some of those, and you can fill that with, with a different type of mastic, and it'll work just fine. It'll move and expand and contract. So how long does a caulking job usually last? If it's done? So you can get a, a caulking that's 55 year. I've never seen it last 55 year. Um, 10 years is probably a good amount of time to see them last. But if there's such a small gap, like if your window, oh, you lost it. Let's see. If your window is doing this and you're seeing that, there's no way for the builder to put backer rod back there. It's just going to grab three sides. And so there's no way to know how much it's going to actually flex, but, but it, it will last. So what kind of problems are you going to be flexing? So if you've got, uh, we, we use Sure Williams, the Sure Elastic, or not Sure Elastic, the Sure Max is a great call. Um, it, that'll expand up to three quarters of an inch. Um, it's a little bit more, but you're going to get a higher quality, more flexible, longer longevity call. Um, it's available in multiple colors um, because most painters, not all of them, have a caulk mixer that they can mix some of the paint into the clear caulking and color um, and color the caulking. So different options out there. So you don't see the caulking or the white. You got two different colors. You don't see the white. Um, any other questions? So this one 
chalk and a chalk rundown. This is a horrible problem. And it's just because of our dry climate. What happens is this paint breaks down. Everything breaks down. Your shoes wear out. Your car dashboard wears out and cracks over time. Paint wears out and cracks um, and, and chalks. So as things wear out and chalk, this is the this is the paint basically falling off. So if you walk up to a house that's kind of got a little bit like a red house is the best way to check this out. You can walk up the house and rub your hand on it, and there's white dust on your hand. That's chalk, and that can easily be removed. There's different, um, and that's never going to stop. That's just part of the part of the game of, of owning a house. Um, but there are different cleaners that you can get that will help take that off. And then there's different additives. That you, oh, the marker is great. So there's different additives you can get. Um, one of them is called Emulsa Bond, and that will help glue your new paint to it. It's like super glue. It's an additive. It doesn't change your color, um, but it does, definitely does make it stick and just bite right into it. Um, question? No? Okay. Um, so this is, you can know, so kind of tell that picture. So in our houses, um, as things move in, because our houses are always moving and expanding, you're going to have some cracking. And that's usually, you can find it in bigger walls where you've got a sheet rock that's moved a little bit or uh, some sort of joint that's new, newly formed. These are always going to be there. You can fix them and mud them and, and make them go away. But because the house has decided to flex right there, that's going to be something that just stays. It's going to come back eventually. The only way to fix that is to cut out the piece of sheetrock and reinstall new sheetrock. But because you decide to cut that part out, it's going to crack somewhere else on that wall because it has to move. Um, hopefully it happens in a place where you don't see it. But it's always, usually it's around a doorway or you know, it follows a, a weak point in the, in the sheetrock. It's never in the middle of a wall. But it's just part of the, part of the game of life. Um, did we just die? There we go. This one. So rust. We have metal doors on our garage doors. Um, doors come from the factory pre-primed, and you can see them there on the pool. Um, I just drove past there to, earlier today, and there the pool doors are cracking, or not cracking, are starting to rust out, and it looks like little freckles. Just to, uh, let's see if it'll. So it looks like little freckles, and you'll see it. Initially, you'll just see a little bit on the surface, but it's happening from the inside out. What happened is the door, love markers. The metal door isn't flat like this. The metal door looks like this. And so when they factory prime it, when it's uh, on, a, on, a micro, on a small level, microscope level, it looks like this. And so when they, find, find, um, when they factory prime it, they spray it on there and it looks good and gray and fancy, but the primer goes on like this. And so you get these little peaks. So these little parts right here, those are the parts that rust out. That's when you get freckling or peak rusting. And this is easily solved by sanding down and repriming with a rust inhibitor primer. And then um, you'll cover that with a second layer of primer and then, um, then you can top coat. Doors, especially like on they're, they're not solid core metal doors. They're, they kind of have like a cardboard type insert to them. And most of our garage doors have that. They will rust from the inside out, and mostly on the bottom where your where your water can wick up into the doors because there's a seam there. Um, doors are something that need to be kept up all the time, as well as your door jams, wood and metal, because they on the bottom of the door. I'm a very visual person, so on the door frame here on the on the ground. You're going to have some rusting or some decay of the wood right there where your snow builds up and you, that, that part falls apart faster. It's just part of the game of life. It's just going to happen because we live in Utah and there's snow. Um, any questions? Next one, we have biggest... So this is flaking. This is just... We won't have this in Utah. This is our in daybreak. This is when paint has just been gone. You, you've waited too long to paint. There is a window of painting where it will cost you less money um, because you have less prep time. A house will require prep, doesn't matter how old it is, but if you have an older house or you've waited too long, your price and repairs will go up because you've waited, you waited too long. Um, so this is lapping. 
So this is when um, you've got problems with the paint not going on evenly. Um, oftentimes, if they, if a homeowner will do this, they think they can get away with one coat. Um, two coats is always recommended. And again, I'm going to have another stupid picture because I like visual things. But two coats is always recommended because you never, you're, you're filling in the low spots. You're going to have, and I'm sure you've seen this when you change colors on things. When you've gone from a darker light or light to dark. You can still kind of see through the color and you can kind of see that there's once was a black wall and you can there's a little bit of gray shadow now. That thing is when there's not enough paint on the wall and it's you can still see some of that color work, uh, behind you. Um, so two coats is always recommended. Um, wait for it. Okay. So we have this in, in daybreak, now head rusting. And this is something that um, happens to not only the hardy, but also to the um, stucco if they don't caulk the, the staples that they're holding on the, the wire mesh on the walls with. Um, nail, hole, nail head rusting is an easy, to, easy one to fix um, because all you do is you can spot prime those or you can caulk those over. Um, putty will fill those in. If you're getting nail hole rusting, it is going to add to the cost of your paint job because it does take longer to fill all those in and take care of those properly. Um, if you don't want to see them, then your price is going to go through the roof because each one of those nail holes that's on your building, it just takes time to fit, fill those in. Um, so if you can handle seeing a few nail holes, your, price, your paint job, your repaint price will go down a little bit because the expectation is just a little bit different. Mm -hmm. uh, next one. Okay, picture framing and half any. This is more known when it's it's more prevalent when we paint when it's a hotter temperature because the paint will dry quicker what that is is as you roll a wall where you're cutting a wall most painters will paint will cut in the hard lines first and then roll up to that to try to get the stipple to, to match when you paint in uh, a stripe with a brush to cut, to cut a clean line and then you roll into that this part that's that's uh you're you brushed on will dry at a faster rate because it's a different thickness than the paint we're rolling on. And so because we're rolling and it can't, it's drying at a different rate, it doesn't always blend very well. And so we'll paint um, different portions of the, of the wall at different portions of at different parts of the day to help combat that. But you see it a lot in um, rooms where where the, it's just fluctuating heat or the temperature's not, um, not warm enough from one day to the next. Or the humidity levels are different. The humidity has a big effect on the on paint also. Um, last one. Okay, there's two. Okay, surfactant leaching is it makes it look like your walls are dirty immediately, and this happens where you've got uh, an interior room or an exterior room where moisture was introduced too early to the paint. Um, paint takes about 30 days to cure out. And we can't wait 30 days to use the bathroom or um, to sprinkler, you know, uh, in your yard. But you can, if you can avoid keeping that humidity in there or keeping the water off your house, surfactant leaching is as the paint cures out and it, as it's getting washed, the, the chemicals that are in the paint are washing out. You can fix this pretty easy. What happens is it just needs to be washed off the water washcloth. Once it's gone two or three times after the, all of it's washed out, then you're fine. It doesn't hurt it. Doesn't affect the longevity of the paint. It's just not curing in the proper uh, order, I guess. And then the last one with with all the wood that we have here and all the things, you have to prime if you're going to repaint. Tannin is the basically the tree sap that's in each of the wood planks or boards, and that bleeds through the paint. A nice oil-based primer that or kills that will block tannin. Um, is necessary to, to treat the wood, especially any new wood, um, because that will bleed right through your primers that aren't designed to block tannin. There are not very many primers out there that will do it. A stain blocking primer is different than a tannin blocking primer. You have to use a tannin blocking primer because and you're buying it. The primer is kills from Home Depot or you're traveling up into Park City to get it and you're smuggling it back because we're, we're not allowed to buy anything from Sherwin or Benjamin Moore in Utah, or in a couple counties in Utah because of the, the VOC laws. 
But in order to make it work really well, you got to get the right stuff. So you're, you're smiling because you, I'm sure you've seen this, right? In 2015, the federal government came down and said, this area right here has really bad air, really bad air. So they're going to force some new laws. They won't allow anything um, with a high level of VOC content. So no more oil bases, no more high VOC stains. So let's change some of the products we can use. Park City is not affected by that same ruling. So we can we can buy stuff up there and smuggle it back in. Um, you, uh, if you if you don't use the, the Home Depot Kills primer or something from Park City, it's going to leak through. It's going to look terrible. The rest of these ones are not are not really applicable to Utah. You're welcome to look on the website and check them out. Um, there, there's we have a drier climate than what those ones um, can, can, can happen in. Um, uh, any questions? Any? Okay. We're here to help. If you have any, if you have any questions, we'll be here for a little bit afterwards. And we're here to make life easier. How about Trex next? So Trex is, I would recommend against painting Trex. That is a plastic surface that's designed to be maintenance free and it's not, paint, uh, any deck stains, solid color deck stains will not stick to it. You can't use any semi transparent on there. Um, it's a solid color stain or walking surface paint. And once it's once you paint it, then you have to maintain it all the time. And I would recommend against that. And say it really is a one it really is real maintenance. You can change the color, but on a horizontal surface in Utah where the snow sits on it and then the sun beats on it, every year you're probably going to be doing something to it. Especially if you got chairs that you slide across it or a barbecue that puts grease on it, it's just going to cause problems. Any, and for that matter, any walking surface in Utah or, or horizontal surface that's uh, stained wood is going to need maintenance yearly uh, in some way or another just because we have a rough climate. Ruins wood really quick. Wood only has a certain amount of life left to it, and so once it's cut, it's not really alive anymore. It's, it's decaying quickly. Any other questions? All right. You bet. I really appreciate that. Um, we'd like to invite uh, Rob Smith of Splash Painting to come up and uh, talk a little bit about, uh, from his perspective, painting and, and maintenance needs. Just to give you a quick bio, uh, Robbie, yeah, Robbie's painted uh, several homes here in the lake and uh, actually lives in the lake, so he's a great person. So welcome. Thank you. Um, I'll start talking while I walk up here because my voice is just as loud. <laughs> so we've been in Daybreak a year, but I lived here five years ago with Max, and it's such a wonderful place to raise kids and live here. Um, I left some of these flyers up here which we'll discuss, and uh, I forgot the gentleman's name, but I really echo everything he said. So, as far as talking maintenance, he hit something you said a few times, but whenever you think of your house, I first want you to think of your house as your car. Would you go 12 months and not wash your car? Absolutely not. You never would. Or would you go to a house, go with your car and just wash your tires? You're going to wash everything, because dirt, there's so many things, there's salt, dirt, we live in an area that has it seems like 20 new homes pop up a year or a month. There's all this dirt. You have, there's not a lot of trees around here. That mountain is not protecting you. Um, to echo what you said, red houses, blue houses as well. You'll get a lot of those things. Um, the, we did 12 homes last year here in Daybreak because um, we moved in the, middle of, in the middle of summer over here. We moved our business over here. Every house that we touched had maintenance issues. Um, with caulking, and I want to state this if you're watching this later, do not caulk the seam to your houses. What, what I'm talking about is when you're, most of your boards are going like this, they're hardy plank basically. Um, we, we went on to a job site that a prior painter had gone on to and the homeowner was worried about the rust nails and, and the how deep those, those, uh, those gaps were. The builder intentionally left those gaps. Your house is moving. When that does, you're gonna break that caulk seam and you have a mess on your hands, whether it's a year or three years with all these little earthquakes we've been having. It could be sooner than, than that, but you're getting those splits. So what we did, we had to actually go back on the job site. We had to resend everything and get everything off. So I 
kind of walk through my process. If I say something, please ask a question. Um, I try to speak in full sentences. But um, when we walk on a job site, the way this splash does it is pretty easy to walk through. We point out the things to the homeowner. If you're not there, I snap a picture and send it to you of the troubled areas. I refer to it as marshmallowing. I don't know what the actual industry name is, but if you live here in Abrake, look on your window sills or at the bottom, you're going to see your wood expand like a marshmallow. It's just been burnt after being there for a minute on a fire. We can't fix that. You've got to replace your wood. It's, it's unfortunate, but the, the initial, as being a residential repaint, not a new construction painter, um, I'm walking onto a side just like you are as a homeowner, not knowing what that history is. Was, those, was that wood primed before? How long did it sit outside in the road before the builder got to it? Did it sit from January to March? And then now March, they're doing it. Was it covered with the proper tea, tea back paper? So there's a lot of things that we don't know. Um, so when we, when we get on, we point all those out. We sand them as best as we can. We use Bondo, not caulk. I've found it works a lot easier for us. Um, as far as longevity, I tell most homeowners after we paint, you're gonna get at least six years, I try to, but that will, I'll add on to why I say maybe. Um, so we walk around the house first, we point out everything that needs to be done. If there's wood that needs to be replaced, we can do it, but I recommend getting someone else that that is their, that is their core job, a carpenter that actually does that. And with the homes, we have three homes that we're sitting on bids right now in Daybreak that the builder warranty is replacing them. And we'll be painting those this year. They started the process last year. So if you live, you live, I keep saying if, but if you're living in Daybreak and you have these issues, reach out to your home warranty, whether you're a new home build or you're an existing build and you re-bought into this house, don't hesitate to reach out. These builders know that there's issues. Take that time, use your warranty. It's gonna put off being painted, but the HOA will happily work with you as long as you've communicated that with them, that that needs to be done. Um, the other issues that we have is rain gutters. I don't know if your guys' crew sees this here in Daybreak, but a lot of the rain gutters, if you walk outside and your house starts to bubble up, it's generally underneath the rain gutter or where a downspout rain gutter should be. It's because there's water in there. Um, I've been very upfront with my business, so I'll be honest. We did a house last June. The homeowner just emailed me two weeks ago saying, hey, it blistered again on our paint job. Splash offers a one-year warranty on our basic package of painting, then we offer up to a five-year warranty on labor. Um, but there's different variables that go, that, that go inside with that. Um, as far as taking care of that. So we're gonna point these out and the prep work, I can paint a house in a day, one story or two story. But that prep work's gonna take me maybe two days, maybe three, depending on how much damage there is. Um, when we replace you, I'll use your, your picture grant that you have here. This, it, picture this being your, your garage door that goes out to your uh, backyard or out of your garage, even your front door. But somewhere where you have grass here, these boards tend to just get destroyed in this area right here. So Home Depot and Lowe's now have a PVC type material that we replace those with to help ensure that. We oil based prime them, we don't go to Park City to get it because Lowe's has enough quality that I don't get in trouble with the county on. So there are those things and, and if you're a homeowner and you're wanting to maintain your home but not pay for it yet and you're seeing these issues, they sell kills in a spray can, it's oil based, it's like a brownish red almost. You can utilize that. Just get a foam brush to kind of tap it in to push it in because when you put oil and it's the first chill, it should repel that water out. But not always, because just like anything, it's going to break down. Um, so when we get on a job site after we've looked over your house and gone through what needs to be fixed, we power wash everything. That's the number one maintenance I can tell anybody is to wash your house. I don't mean blasting it. There's a gentleman here in Daybreak. Um, if he needs information, I cannot think of his name. Johnson's last name. He owns a power washing company. He lives here in Daybreak. He power washes plenty of homes and cars here. He's really good at what he does. We actually hire him out to do some of our power washing for us. Um, and that ties in with this, what this paperwork is. We, like you guys, use Sherwin-Williams primarily. Um, if someone wants Benjamin or we will go with it, but I'm more of a Sherman Williams guy just because I know the product, I know the durability, what I'm going to get. Home Depot and Lowe's, they're great. They're, they're not the worst product, but you'll be reapplying it a lot more times than you would going with a Sherman based product. Um, these are at the table, and I have these, I can mail these out too, but this is just basically going over super paint and, and uh, this is duration, but there's an emerald urethane as well. 
when we paint a house, depending on the color, if it's reds, blues, greens, the most popular color this year seems to be gray, um, different shades of gray. If there's green grays and blue grays, if you have a dark pigmented color, we have to prime your house. There's no way around it because in three years, you're going to see that house fade. It's, there's nothing, it's not a painter issue. It's just the sun, the heat, the water, the salt, the smog, whatever it is you want to call it, inversion that we have here. So just know that if you're going to get in with your, to paint your home when you're getting ready to, if you have a dark pigment in color, you will need to have that primed. We did one, if you want the address, I can, I'm sure they're okay with it. But our house is green, we primed it. It's bright white now, beautiful house, but you can't tell. But it, we, as painters, we're really realistically painting your house twice. So it is, it's, it's a cost thing, but it's just, it's a maintenance thing as well. Um, with that, so we'll power wash everything. We remove all the lights, all your address numbers, um, rain gutters. We will remove things away from the house. The number one issue that we see, like the Central Pro said, is if you guys have sprinklers that are hitting your house, you need to move them immediately. I'm sure there's a young man in the neighborhood that wants to make some money, that uh, or a young woman that wants to make some money for whatever. You can, they can learn how to move these sprinkler heads. They're not that hard, but there's a group of us that know how to move sprinklers. You've got to get the water off your house immediately or it's just gonna create a bigger issue. So as we're walking through the house, after we've power washed and moved everything, we will spray, we, majorly we've sprayed every house. That if it's super windy, we will roll if we need to. We apply two coats as well. We turn our base, I'm giving you too much information on how we apply, but I think it's important. We turn our pressure up, making sure that you're getting quality coats, which goes into what this buyer is. is super paint is our base paint. It's, it's Sherman Williams first premium level. And then you can go up, like in April and May, we may use a resilience because it's more of a, it repels water because it dries quicker. Um, and then there's Emerald, which is the Rolls Royce of painting, I guess, in my eyes. Sherman Williams offers a lifetime warranty on that. I offer, we offer a five year warranty on the labor part of it, but there comes restrictions with that. You have to wash your house. I, I tell people wash the seasons off, it's in our bid sheet. If you upgrade to this paint, your upgrading is, you know, cost-wise, I want to be very transparent in this, is you're looking almost twelve to $2,000, depending on the size of your house. It's a huge chunk of money, I just saw some miles go big, but you're looking at $90 a gallon paint opposed to $30 a gallon. So there's a reason why. This fire will tell you this is actually on upgrading the duration, but if you want the Emerald upgrade, I have it in an email, I can shoot that over to you on the specs. But basically what you're wanting to do is when, when summer ends or when winter ends, which is right about now, power wash. And you don't need to get a big power wash. You can buy a wand. High Tools makes a wand. It's like, I think, I think it's $35. Um, if you can't find them, I can order them for you. That it'll reach the top of these houses. I use them sometimes. The house is not dirty. That dirty will wash them. There's a soap thing, a soap container. You can add soap if you want it. Please, 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 when you're maintaining your homes, do not use any oil on your house. Um, there was a, a company a few years ago that was telling people to use a like a minwax type oil on your house. Don't because painters. The issue was, oh, like, <laughs> we painted this house and we had to tape some stuff off. Uh, normally, paint doesn't peel after you've done it. We're using the proper tape. My guys last year in a house, they uh, took some paint off. It peeled off forty feet of paint. <laughs> Funny, it was. <laughs> And it was all trim, and it was both layers. So we, we contacted the homeowner, we called her, and you know, we'll always fix the issue, but I gotta know what happened. And she had said to me, well, four years ago, I, I had someone come out and power wash, and they use an oil, because the concept is that oil will re-energize re that color, those pigments. You'll get a letter from the HOA, say, hey, I don't wanna paint, I don't wanna call Splash or Century Pro, I'll do it myself, and you just throw something on you, Googled, and uh, WebMD Google said, this is how you fix your house. Don't do it, it'll cost you more money. So, and as, as a painter, I don't know if you guys do, but there's really not a tool that we test the, for the majority of our houses, we know what the paint is, but if I think I see a weird sheen, we do like an alcohol test on it to see if it's oil, but if it's five years old, that my testing isn't gonna pull it, well, the minute I pull a piece of tape off, I got 40 feet of new paint, new house I got to paint. So um, just don't do that. If you have questions and you're in daybreak, I will answer your questions for you. Even if you're a DIYer, do-it-yourself or whatever that term is, 
I will answer the question for you because it, it, knowledge is power as far as I'm concerned. And there's a lot of you people that want to do it yourself, which is great. And there's a lot of you that don't want to climb a 30 foot ladder. I don't blame you. But ask before you start applying these weird things um, because you never know what's going to happen. And you could be like all those pitches that you had. You could be alligating your house, you could be getting dust and not even knowing it and then costing yourself thousands upon ten thousands of dollars down the road to have us fix those. Um, but let's talk about metal. Um, these doors right here, I know you guys can see it on the screen, but metal doors, garage doors, aluminum doors, we, we primarily use DTM, which is called direct to metal paint. It's more of a contractual side of painting, but when we have metal doors, there are a handful, there's actually a lot of homes we're finding now that have real full heavy metal doors. We use DTM, we, we sand everything, we strip the old paint off, it's the best way. We actually remove your door. We put a fake door up. I have a fake door that we install so you're not without a door. Um, so your little ones can run in and out. But we'll put a fake door on. We either leave it there, we'll take it back to our shop, and we'll strip the door, get it with DTM, let it dry for at least two days. Because I know that when I place that back on, it's dry enough that little thumbprints aren't going to, to ruin it. Um, and heat with us, we, in the summertime, once generally when school's out, we start our crew at six o'clock. I know some of you guys have ran by and saw Splash out there because come three or four sometimes, this heat and these shingles get way too hot for us painters because um, it's like 20 more degrees up by a shingle. So um, I was asked to ask this by my crew, please don't talk to us before we're on a ladder. Someone fell last year because the homeowner was trying to talk. It was only like three feet, but still, if you see us on a ladder, no talking, we don't have our ladder shirts, but just, you know, don't for our sake. But back to the metal thing. Sorry, that just came to my head that someone's like, talk to about not talking to me on a ladder. Um, DTM, is, is, it's made to stick to metal. It's a magnetic thing that I don't understand the science. I'm sure these guys know. I just know it works and it doesn't scratch. So if you want to know if it's done properly, if you can take your fingernail and scratch it off, it's alkaline or some type of water-based paint. If it doesn't scratch off, it's oil-based or metal paint. You never want to put oil on metal because it won't work. Um, as far as faux finishing, there's a lot of these houses that you guys have these beautiful, elegant doors. Use Old Masters. They have a proper stain covering, but what we do at Splash is once we stain it, after one year, we'll go back and recoat it because the sun, I don't need to restain the door, but we'll add another coat on to prevent. This is normally in the, the first part of daybreak. There's a lot of homes that have wooden doors that we'll go back and we'll re- Re, uh, I call it regloss, and we regloss the doors. And when you have a paint specialist, whether it's Century Pro, myself, or any of the other painters that come and give you a bid, talk to them about sheens. Sheen's a huge issue because if you go with high gloss, it's really nice, but you're going to see a lot of the issues. Not that the painter did, we call it sheening, but you're going to see a lot of waves in your paint jobs because these boards aren't straight. Your house is truly always moving without you filling it. So look at like a low luster or a satin. They're very washable, durable paints. Make sure that your paint company is using these proper paints. And, and ask, I, I know it's silly, but I know it happens. Ask your painters if they're watering down paint. I think the very first thing you talked about was water. Don't add water to your paint. I don't care if you need a little, if you like need a, a quart, go to the store and get it. It's worth the $10 opposed to the $100 that it may cost you to have one of us come back in and, and paint. But for the most part, that's what we do with Splash as far as maintaining it. We do kind of leave you with, we're gonna start leaving you guys with paperwork that tells you what it is. Um, also, so you guys know, as far as what we're doing to help, some of the concerns that I've heard from residents as the painter is, we're gonna let the HOA know your color schemes from now on. I think it's very useful for us and for you. That way if you ever sell, I know some people have sold their homes or going to sell, like, hey, I need to sell this. The new buyers wanna know what color it is. Um, it, it's just, it's a useful tool that we have. Um, the HOA has a color book now. If you're ripped on colors, go to Sherman Williams. They have color books or color decks you can get. HOA has them, I have a hundred of them, and I'm sure you guys do as well. Because picking the color is the most, I always tell people, when you, when you buy a house, you spend three to five to seven hundred thousand dollars on this home. You want to pull up to and be like, this is my house. This is what I pay my money for. So as a painter, our first thing that we that we teach and, and we do is detail. I want it to be detailed. If you want a certain window, door frame, you know, with a gloss like doors, we usually do high gloss on our doors 
on exteriors, and then we use either a satin or lotion. Some people don't like gloss. We'll, we'll mirror it your way, just understand that this is your home and that as the painter, we know it's your house. And we're gonna do everything that we can to make sure that it's to your standard and what you want when you sign that contract to buy. So, you know, that's a mouthful. Yes. Um, so I'm assuming that most of the paint that you use the exterior of the home is like All of it is, unless I jump up to emerald. Emerald is a hybrid paint. It's an oil water base, but it's an oil that maybe you know this better. I, it, it, it's a it's oil that works with water. How that works, I don't know. I'm not a scientist, but it does. It, it allows more products or chemicals, I'll say, to go into the paint to allow it to last longer. Meaning it doesn't let dust and rocks and grime hold to it. It's, it's a reason you don't use oil as opposed to like that. We can't. VOC laws. That's a, in 2015, the federal government said you can't use like oil based. So, so before we, anything with the volume, uh, the VOC or the volume of organic compound, anything with the anything higher than 250 is out. I don't want to get into politics, but think of the liquor law in Utah. Liquor is only allowed to have, or alcohol is only allowed to have a certain percentage. It's legitimately the same thing. We we, we moved here from Reno, and I did some houses in Tahoe. Nevada and Reno have very strict laws. When we were up there, every day, I had a paint ranger, that's what I call him, he had checked my truck. If I had a, if I had a gallon or more of oil-based paint, it was a $25,000 fine. They're very, very strict with us about it. And honestly, oil-based is nice, but in four or five years, it's just like when you were, when you were talking about decks or any wood that you're gonna walk on, there's so much, trash on your feet that walks on it, even oil based doesn't withstand that. So in Utah where we have a month, February inversion month, where you're having all that smog sit here, has to go somewhere. Your house is a, is a magnet, whether it's inside your house or outside it's you're gonna get that. And so I, I know a few guys back east that do oil because they can. Um, but primarily on that it's actual wood that you're going to do. But you're paying two or three thousand dollars every three years just to do it. But if you're if you've bought a paint service from Splash Painting or Century Pro, or you're looking to buy one because either you got the letter for it or you want to change it, maintenance is number one thing. Wash your house. It doesn't need to be power blasting. Then look at it. Stay this far away from the bottom of your body, and just start at one, just like you would a car, and go. I know it's a little it takes about. I'll tell you right now. For us, and this is not even using a ladder, we have a two-story home here at Daybreak, I can do it in 45 minutes. So it's not that long of a process. You know, you're, you're watering your plants also, but it does it does allow that. So, and one thing that we do, we don't, if your fascias don't, and what the fascias, if you go on your porch or look underneath, that lip that goes underneath, we try not to paint those unless they absolutely need to, or we'll try to replace it with the same material. Because when you start painting your fascias, it can sag or it can cause them to crack. So just be careful with how you're doing those. That's just a, I think, I know a lot of other painters that still paint them. Some do, some don't. That's just a, a part of our business plan that we don't do that for customers um, because I've, I've had some snap on me even the day of painting because I never know how many layers of paint have been on that. And when you're getting, um, I guess I use markers since they're here. I'm gonna erase your artwork. Oh, that's okay. Um, on the bottom of houses, it, I would love to find a homeowner daybreak that's less than a year old, or a year or more. On the bottom of your houses, don't mind my drawing, guys. You have your, your beautiful porch, but most porches have this uh, dressing, I'll call it. It's not that big, but you have this, like uh, almost like a crown molding at the bottom of it. This is the number one place you're gonna find issues. You gotta keep it clean. If it snows, send little one out there to move it off. You gotta keep moving your snow, especially if you've had it repainted. You know, we were painting exteriors into September of this last year. And um, I felt, so for those homeowners, I, it's only one I'm worried about. 
that it snowed like a week later and it was like sitting there. So it's important that if you are getting it painted that afterwards you clear this area off of everything. Now, if you have the issue of the pictures that they showed earlier, if you're having those issues, you can wet sand your that piece of wood and go to Home Depot as a maintenance project to just put some oil-based primer on there and then after a day, I usually like to wait a day after we, after we prime anything if we can, unless it's 65 degrees or hotter, then, um, then you can apply whatever paint you have. And I think most of us leave paint for you, so no one ever hesitate to ask your painter, hey, can I get a quart of what you left over? Because you know what? You, you may want to touch up something or match that color. So I hope that answers some maintenance questions. Yes? Uh, is the process different with stucco? Stucco is, stucco is a little bit different. Daybreak doesn't have a lot of stucco. Um, with stucco, you get, the, the biggest thing with stucco that we have are, I call them finger cracks. If you can stick a pencil lead in it, we need to use elastomeric. Elastomeric is a type of caulk that um, we use. It, it comes in either a tube or you can, br I usually brush mine in. So our process that we, we do a stucco at home is one, we're gonna power wash it first, let it dry for a day. You have to let your house dry for at least a day. Again, if it's over 75, you may get away with it. It just depends on how much humidity is in the air. You gotta fill these cracks to help prevent them. Um, and a, a, I hate to say it, but a good painter will have the brush. There's a certain type of brush or a, a particular brush that we use that mirrors that texture. So once we paint it on, because that's one thing you don't wanna see this beautiful stucco wall that all of a sudden you have. There's a way to texture it with a rag or a brush, or even a sponge if you have the right one. Um, then we prime it. If you ever change a color, ever use caulk, ever, and this is going interiors right now, if you ever fix a hole in your wall because you're, you're moving pictures, you know, um, you've got to make sure that you prime whatever spa you use back on. Even though it says 3M makes a great product that says it's paint and prime, paint and uh, 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 putty, still use a little bit of primer on it, that area and then fix it up. When we do these, we, we sponge them, we make sure they're done right. Um, we back roll stucco, unlike a traditional home. I will back roll it to ensure that it's in there. I use a nade that's just pretty, it's pretty heavy duty. Um, that's the same thing with brick. A lot of you guys have brick, I've gotten calls. We can paint brick, we do paint brick. We have to primer that first, which is in a sense water burying that for you, so that it, the brick, by nature, brick and mortar want to push water out. So we have to prime it, but you can paint your brick. It is paintable. Just get your colors approved by the HOA before you tell me. Um, but as far as that, other than that stucco, that's the only thing that we worry about is is what cracks you are. They do tend to gather a lot more spider webs than everything. And usually with stucco, I use a flat based paint. Um, it just seems to get better. So, any other questions? All right, well, thank you. I did leave some business cards next to that. Again, if you guys have questions on upgrading paint, don't say that to yourself. I'm sure Central Pro has similar things. So. That's great. Thank you. And thank you, um, Robbie, and thank you to Adam and Bradley from Surf Pro. We're going to post uh, this information online uh, as well, so any of the handouts and the contact information will be available online. Look for more information coming up uh, shortly on some uh, future lunch and learn series. Uh, in, in later this month and in the spring and fall. So, thank you.